The final major championship of 2022 is upon us as the world's best golfers take on Muirfield for the AIG Women's Open. The event became permanently affiliated with the LPGA Tour in 1994 and then in 2001 was elevated to major championship status. And groups don't come more compelling than the numbers one, two and three in the world rankings. Jin Young Ko, Nelly Korda and Minji Lee will all play together Thursday and Friday. A little earlier we heard from some of the best players in the world. Uh, I think just a lot of hard work has kind of come together. Um, you know, we worked so hard for, you know, our, our goals and our dreams to come true. And I think for Cam, I think it's been a whole lot of hard work and a lot of, um, a lot of hours into his, into his skills and his games. So I think it's almost the same for everybody and it's the same for me too. Minji, what did you take out of last week, you know, playing at Dundonald that you feel can help you this week? Um, I think just getting into the rhythm of, um, of you know, playing on Lynx style courses. It wasn't quite that windy um, at Dundonald, so I'm not sure how windy it's going to be here. But I feel like um, Muirfield is maybe a little bit more traditional, um, like Lynx golf. Uh, like Dundonald felt like it had a lot more slopes here and there. So um, I think just a tiny bit different style of the actual design of the courses. It's been great. Like I said, I've just only played 18 holes. Uh, the grounds are beautiful, really nice views of the water as well. Everyone's been really welcoming. The practice facility is amazing. I love that the ninth hole comes back to the golf uh, <laughs> the clubhouse. Um, but yeah, I'm, it's a beautiful golf club, um, beautiful golf course. And so far, everyone's been really welcoming. And I think... Um, it's going to be a great test to see how the weather is going to be. But I saw that. I think they've hosted 16 Open Championships. So it's going to be really special to finally host a women's too this week. The, the sort of round you played yesterday, what do you feel the strength's going to be required this week to, to do well here? Um, I mean, definitely, I, I think it, all of it. <laughs> if you want to win... A tournament in general, everything kind of has to come together, but the par threes are definitely tough. I think the greens are a bit more undulated for British style golf courses that I've played. So if it gets really windy, it's, the greens are going to be really tricky. The par threes are pretty long. Um, there's definitely a lot of like fall offs in the front of the greens. So overall, I think the entire golf course, I mean, you have to strike it well. The fairways aren't really too wide either. Sometimes you just have to be aggressive and just to take the shot in the fescue to be closer to the green. Um, but yeah, I think the golf course is going to be a great test depending on the weather too. It's the first time you've been over here, Nelly, since you've had a tough year health-wise. I mean, obviously all good now. Can you just talk us through how difficult that spell was for you? Yeah, I'm all good now. Um, thankfully, I've taken the right steps, taken time off. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was tough, obviously, uh, as well, missing the first major of the year and first part of the season. But I'm thankful that I'm here. I can be playing golf, doing what I love, traveling the world. And um, yeah, I just have to monitor it. Obviously, if you go through something like that, you just have to be more aware of these situations. And um, I've learned more about myself, learned more about my body, and I'm grateful that I'm just out here playing. Um, I love it here at Muirfield. Um, I think it's maybe my favorite links that I've ever played. Um, it's definitely gonna be a great test, very challenging, especially if it's as windy as it is right now. Um, but I think, you know, it's just a beautiful views uh, walking around and it's a beautiful golf course. So I'm really excited to tee it up on Thursday. How important is winning the second major Oh, you're, the, the first one's always good, but some people get stuck on the first one. How important is, is getting that uh, box ticked off? Oh, yeah, it's super exciting. It, it did take six years, <laughs> but it was, it was definitely worth the, the, worth the wait. Uh, you know, to, be my, to win my first major championship, you know, it really changed my life. You know, just the attention that I received from media and from fans and, you know, everything. Um, and, but then to get the second one, you know, it kind of... It just, yeah, it's a box that you can check off and it just kind of makes you feel a little bit more confident about where your game is and, and that you can compete on, on the biggest stages. Just heard from Brooke Henderson. She's one of two players this year to break an elongated major drought. We're talking thousands of days. Brooke Henderson won her second major six years after her first, while KPMG Women's PGA champ Inji Chun ended her major drought of six years as well and a Nordquist a drought of 1,400 
in 35 days. So, Eamon, who will end their major drought this week at Muirfield? Well, two of the names we just saw there, Inge Chun and Brooke Anderson, had previously last won a major in 2016. My choice is someone who's also a 2016 major champion, but we haven't seen much of lately, which is Lydia Cole. Mm. And, you know, Lydia's had, since that 2016 Chevron win, she's had five top three finishes in majors. So she has been close, five LPGA Tour wins during that time as well. But she also went through a three-year drought where she didn't win anything yeah. at all, and which seems so improbable given the clip that she was winning at earlier in her career. But she has won each of the last two seasons. She held the 54-hole lead last weekend at the Trust Scottish Open and just kind of hit neutral on Sunday and, and didn't get it done. But she has played well in the past at the Women's Open. She was tight there at Turnberry back in 2015. Historically, her results there are less impressive in that major than any of the other majors. But she does have a decent record of playing Lynx golf. And I think she's in form. She's number four in the world. She's oddly out of that conversation because so much attention goes on Jin Young-Ko, Nelly Korda and Minji Lee. Yeah. But she's right there behind them. And I think this is going to be the week she breaks that. Drought. I happen to be in agreement with you. I think she's on the cusp. I didn't like how she putted on Sunday at the mm -hmm. Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open, but this season she's third in putts per green on the LPJ Tour. She's second in putting average. She's fifth in scoring. She is right there. And you mentioned her major championship resume since that second major in 2016. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the top five. She has 10 top tens as well. It's not it's been as if she's not been in the mix, not been competitive. But I just wonder, I mean, she reminds me in a lot of ways of Jordan Spieth. There was such magic early. And then you know how the sausage is made. You know, Lydia went one direction because Jordan Spieth has kind of kept his team, coach, Caddy. Lydia went a different direction. New coaches, new caddy, new equipment. The only thing she didn't change was her name. Exactly, at, at, at this point anyway. But do you think that this is not just going to be maybe a win this week, which we both think, but can she get back to where she was, where the game looked easy and magical, or did this game with its you know, vagaries just not allow for that? I don't know that I've ever seen anyone get back to being able to play with the magical freedom that comes with youthful Tiger, maybe. phenoms. Tiger, in a way, kind of never really lost it. He, he never returned to the player that he was at his absolute peak because that was a standard that had been set that nobody had ever mm. reached before. But you look at a, a Jordan Spieth and that kind of effervescence that he played golf with. First few years of his career, Rory McIlroy, very much the same. But eventually, you start to take on a little bit of scar tissue and you start yeah. to hit potholes along the way and your confidence gets knocked. And then you start to make changes. And then you're looking at the guy standing next to you on the range and thinking well, he's playing better than I am, what's he doing? Should I try that? Yeah. And it, it's very easy to start going down rabbit holes in, in, in this game at any level, where you start to think that there, there's always something better ahead. And it's very, very difficult to ever get back to playing with the kind of freedom that a lot of people can play with in the early days of their career, when there seems to be so much less at stake. So it, it would be hard to, for Lydia Ko, I think, to get back to that kind of attitude and to scrape off that scar tissue. Yeah. It's possible, I would expect her to start winning perhaps more frequently than she has over the last couple of years. It's a matter of how you process the scar tissue, and she seems to have done a remarkably strong job of that. Yeah, in some ways, the iPad, I think, is the worst invention ever. Not just because my 11-year-olds like to play video games on it, but players have access to their swings, and to see Lydia Ko looking at her swing or a Jordan Spieth looking at his swing on the range, I just want to see them, and I think they're getting back to being more natural. I mean, Jordan Spieth is, is a, a fighter, and, and he's someone who finds a way to get the ball in the hole no matter how it looks. I think Lydia Ko has a lot of natural ability, and even her new coach, Sean Foley, not new anymore, but of about a year now, has said, just be an athlete. Go back to being an athlete, a natural player. I think sometimes too much technology is a detriment to these players. We heard Rory McIlroy say similar things as well over the course of the last year of just simply trying to think mm. in, in the way the, that he used to. Try to be free yeah. of swing thoughts and have a natural athleticism to how you do it. But that's a lot easier said yeah. than done. We even see now, as Jordan's trying to get back to that, that hugely exaggerated rehearsal yeah. before every swing. And he's, he's very much conscious of it. He's slightly embarrassed by it, but he said on the show here that he wants to get away from that yeah. at some point. 
but right now that's still a safety net that he needs. And he is a winner on the PJ Tour this season. Let's continue this conversation, bring in our own Paige McKenzie. Paige, you just heard our agreement that Lydia Cole will be the next player to end that major drought. Who's your pick? My pick is Yoju Kim, and we're talking about a player that has an even longer drought than the droughts that you've been talking about. She was the 2014 Evian champion, and she similarly had a precipitous fall off in her game after the 2014 season. She won six times on the KLPGA that year, was non-member of the LPGA Tour when she won at Evian, and after that, you saw a slow decline. If you look at what happened or how it happened, it doesn't take long to figure out that it was just a ball striking issue. And what we've seen since then is a better and more impressive Yoju Kim. So back in 2015, which was the first year she was a full-time member on the LPGA Tour, she won twice worldwide that year at 70% of her greens and regulation, 16 twice worldwide as well. And you can see this decline throughout the years. 2018, she fell to 67th in the world from a top 10 player in the world. And then over the last couple of years, we've seen a resurgence of Yoju Kim. She won uh, in 2021. She's won already this season. And you can see the best of her career in her ball striking this season at 73%. Now, when you take into account as well, her most recent finishes. This should give you confidence that she will be the player to break through and break that drought because in her last three finishes, she finished a tie for fifth at KPMG, a major championship, a tie for third at Evian, another major championship, and a tie for third last week at the Scottish. She's trending very much in the right direction for a good possible breakthrough again at the AIG Women's Open. Okay, I'm changing my vote. Me I'm too. Going. She just convinced me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What are we so doing up here? On this one. <laughs> Paige, there's so many players in good form entering the AIG. Who's your player to watch this week? You know, I think for a lot of people following the LPGA Tour, it has to be Minji Lee. She is the best player in the world. She is not ranked number one in the world, but she is by far the best player. And when I went and broke down uh, kind of <coughs> what has been going on with the world ranking, Minji Lee, over the last season, just so far since January, she's had 273 world ranking points. Jin Young Ko, 154. That's a vast difference. If you break it down by event, you're looking at 21 to 14. So she is far and away been playing the best golf. And then when you take into account that she's had two wins and two runner-up finishes on the LPGA Tour, I think everybody is looking at Minji Lee as a potential uh, this week. And I I'm just anxious to see her back in play. It's fun to watch a player play well. And this has been a career year for Minji Lee. She's known for, for have being a great ball striker, which is, I think, part of the reason that she's had success in major championships. You mentioned Jim. And when you take into account, I don't even want to, uh, sorry, didn't even want to forget the fact that when you look at her record at the British Open or at the Women's AIG Open, uh, you're looking at a player that has played extremely well here. Uh, going back seven years, she's got a couple missed cuts, but outside of those two missed cuts, uh, ninth place, 25th, and then her last four years, a 10th, 11th, a third, and a tie for fifth last year, she's played this event well. So you got to keep that in mind. Yeah, I was going to say, very consistent. Maybe Jin Young Ko, not so consistent in this event. How do you feel about her chances to find major number three? Uh, yeah, I... Jin Young Gus had a very interesting year, uh, and, and you mentioned her, her record this at this event, and she's only played it three times, uh, but two of the three times she's been in the top five. Going back to 2015, where in Indy Park ended up winning that, and Jin Young Ko at the time was just known as the other Ko, because that was in the midst of Lydia Ko's uh, dominance as well. Missed the cut in 2018. Finished third in 2019, and we haven't seen her play this event the last two years in 2020 or 21. Uh, so I'm anxious to see how she's going to play at this event that she's played so well at. But more importantly, I'm anxious to see how she's going to play. It's just been a very off year. And I say that as she's still the number one ranked player in the world. But when you look at how it's happened, she had a couple good finishes early in the year. She did win her first start of the year, but she's lost seven yards off of the tee which I find to be quite curious. And for the player that has led and been an historic leader in greens and regulation, the best that the LPGA has seen since Annika, she's lost four or 5% 
going into the green, which I would probably attribute to the poor ball striking off of the tee. So it's a bit of a curiosity with Jin Young Ko and what's gone on this season, but we do know over the last couple of years that she has a late kick, you guys. She, she's never out of the race, and you never know when she's going to turn it on and kick into the finish line. Well, Paige, we've spent a lot of time talking about the heavyweights. Who's your sleeper pick this week? For me, it's Lizette Salas. It's really hard to ignore a player that would finish runner-up two of the last three playings of the AIG Women's Open. Remember in 2019, she had shot seven under on that Sunday when Hinaka Shibuno was the Cinderella story to go on and take it. And then last year, she was one of a, a handful of players that finished runner-up to Anna Nordquist. So a player that plays well in Link's style of golf, as well as somebody that recently broke her own drought uh, of, of winlessness when uh, she paired up with Jennifer Cupcho in the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. And I'm curious to see how she's going to parlay that performance into her own individual performances. We unfortunately did not see her finish last week at the Scottish Open as she had to withdraw. So I'm curious to see if her injury or, or whatever seemed to be plaguing her, which she referenced in a social media post that perhaps it was a wrist injury that caused the withdrawal last week. Curious to see uh, if she's going to be healthy and then if she can ride that momentum of the win. Yes, it was a partner event that she won, but nonetheless a W on the LPGA Tour and returning to an event that she has performed very well at. Absolutely right. Six top tens in majors, three of them at the AIG Women's Open. Thank you very much, Paige. We will see you next hour. And folks, catch history in the making as the best golfers in the world take on Muirfield for the year's final major championship. First round coverage of the AIG Women's Open begins Thursday at 6 a.m. Eastern. A little coffee golf on USA Network. Golf Today, back after this.